Now we're going to take what we learn about complex numbers and how to represent these complex numbers in trigonometric form. The objectives are as follows. We want to graph complex numbers. Given a complex number in standard form, find the trigonometric or polar notation. And given a complex number in trigonometric form, find the standard notation. So use trigonometric notation to multiply and divide complex numbers and use de Morvray's theorem to raise complex numbers to powers. And then finally we're going to take the nth roots of a complex number. So let's take a look at graphing complex numbers. So here we're given a plus bi which can be also written as a comma bi where this represents the real component, this represent B represents the imaginary component. So let's graph the following complex numbers. Here we have 3 plus 2i. We count 1, 2, 3. And we have i right here, 2i. So this is 3 comma 2i for this complex number found in this complex plane. Minus 4 and minus 5, i shown here, minus 3i shown here, minus 1 and 3i shown here, and finally 2 plus 0i. So you can think of just a real number here, 2, as 1 having no complex number. So here it would just be 2 and 0i. So let's look at the absolute value of a complex number in this complex plane. So let's say we're given the absolute value of negative 1 minus i. We plot the point here, negative 2 and minus i, shown here in this complex plane, and we want to find the absolute value. So here we've written it with the additive inverse as plus and the additive or opposite of i is negative 1. So we have right here the additive inverse of 1 to be negative 1 and we just put a change that minus sign to a plus sign. So basically to find the absolute value is really to find the distance from this point to the origin. And what that involves is taking the square of the real component plus the square of the imaginary component, sum those two numbers up, and then take the square root. So here, the real component is negative 2, so we square it, real squared. The imaginary component is negative 1, so we square that also. Sum these two numbers, the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, and then we take the square root, and that's the distance, or absolute value, from this point to the origin. So this works out to be square root of 5, since this is 4, and this is 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. Let's look at another example. Here we have a pure imaginary number. No real component. It's just 4 fifths i. And we want to find the distance. So we have 0 real component squared plus 4 fifths squared for the imaginary component. And we take the square root of that. And that yields just simply 4 fifths. So the distance from this point to the origin is simply 4 fifths. Now let's look at the trigonometric notation in the complex plane and how we represent a complex number. We note that a plus bi, we looked at this before, and we can think of this as like a rectangular form. We calculated the absolute value to be like the distance, but since we have this notation now in trigonometric, we have a radius and an angle to locate that same point in terms of these two parameters, the radius and this angle. Whereas in the previous form, the standard form, we have it in terms of the rectangular component where we have A is the x component or real axis component and B is sort of like the y or imaginary axis component. Using this figure, we can figure out what the cosine of theta is here and it's just basically the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is this component here on the real axis, A, 
divided by the radius r. Solving for a, we multiply r on both sides of this equation, and that gives us a equals r cosine of theta. We can do the same thing for the sine of theta, in which we have the opposite, which is b, divided by the hypotenuse, which is r. Solving for b, we have b equals r sine of theta. So when we substitute these values, a and b, into this form, we get a plus ib, or bi, is equal to r cosine of theta plus r sine of theta with the imaginary number i. We see that r is common, so we can think of this as factoring it out, r, now we have cosine of theta plus the sine of theta i. I'd like to point out that this form here is called the trigonometric notation. So I'd like to point out that we have identity here. R cosine of theta plus sine of theta i is equivalent to e to the j theta. So this is identity that I won't prove, but this is, say, we're given. So whenever you see this form, cosine of theta plus sine of theta i, it's equal to e to the i theta. Okay, so we can reduce this to r e to the i or j theta. In other words, we can think of a plus i b is sort of like the rectangular form, and this is the polar form, r e to the i theta or j theta. Okay? So think of this as the rectangular form, and this is like the polar form or polar notation, where we go from one form to the other. So this is the rectangular form, and this is like the polar form. And this is so where we go from one form to the other. So let's say we want to find the trigonometric notation for i minus i, 1 minus i. So here we're given 1 minus i is equal to r cosine of theta plus sine of theta i. And that's our trigonometric notation. But we note that r in this case is just simply the distance from this point to the origin. And we saw that the absolute value of a complex number is simply just the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared and you take the square root. In this case it's the square root of 2. We note that the sine of theta is just the b, or complex component, over the radius, or in this case, negative 1 over divided by the square root of 2, or negative square root 2 over 2. Likewise, for cosine of theta, it's the real part over the radius, sort of like the hypotenuse, and it's 1 divided by square root of 2, and here we have the square root of 2 over 2 for cosine of theta. In this case, we could see that this is a negative part, so it falls on the fourth quadrant right here. So what we have is 7 pi over 4, which is 315 degrees. When we do that, our trigonometric rotation going from this form to this form is given as square root of 2 times the quantity cosine of 7 pi over 4 plus the sine 7 pi over 4 i. So this is our trigonometric notation here. Now we want to go from our trigonometric notation given in this example to our standard notation given as a plus b i. So let's say we're given this and we want to convert it in this form. Okay, so what we have here to convert it from one form to the other, since we're given r and cosine of theta, we can calculate a, as provided and indicated by this drawing. So in this case, r is 10, and the theta here is 270. So what we have is 10 times the cosine of 270 for a, and b is just 10 times the sine of 270. We see that 270, the cosine of 270, is 0 and b is just 
10 times minus 1 when you take that 270 right here and it's just minus 10. Hence we have no real component and a minus 10 component for the imaginary term. So going from this tri trigonometric notation to this standard notation these two are equivalent. We can also simplify this result as minus 10i.